Welcome to Gen Z Hoops. The Gen Z Basketball Coaching and Sports Business Show. On this podcast, you'll learn from professional players, coaches, and executives from all over the world and see the court in a brand new way. And now, joining you courtside, your Gen Z host, John Hartafillis. Hey, Zach, what's going on? Nothing much. How you doing, John? Doing great. Really excited to have you on. Obviously, having just seen Space Jam last week, it's really fresh in my mind. And, and, and I'm really excited for this one, especially, right? Having a great time watching the movie, but also, right, uh, seeing all the great work you did on camera, right? You do a good job, so we couldn't really tell if it was you or not because you do such a good job of what you do. Uh, but, right, knowing that that's you doing all those dunks and stuff is really cool thinking about that. But what people maybe don't know about you from what, what they see on camera is that you actually had a really great playing career, right, in, in basketball overseas and, and, and in college. Can you talk to us a little about maybe where that passion started for you? I'm curious as to what made you fall in love with the game when you were maybe in high school and climbing up the ranks you know it just first started because I didn't really have anybody if that makes sense I grew up in a foster home a lot of us were kind of just dispersed everywhere I got six sisters and two little brothers the family that I happened to be with it was it was bad man my bad foster home was bad the first one man and you know just how they treated me and my foster mom she had three boys two and they're maybe like 18 or whatever. And um, I would just get treated bad, man. And so I didn't really understand basketball. And so I, I would see them playing it. And so I thought, you know, I can, I can be better than them. Even though they're older, I know I can be better. And as the, you know, the time went on, I'd play here and there, you know, just to kind of get my mind right and, and set away from that that just that foster home, it was, it was really bad. Uh, I was, you know, abused and, and, and whatnot. And um, yeah. And then ended up going, going back with moms and um, you know, she ended up getting, getting herself together. Bless her, bless her heart. She's doing really good, you know, coming off of, you know, heavy drinker, you know, the, just the substance abuse. And um, yeah, man, and I got really heavy into it in the seventh grade. And I, yeah, up, up until that point, I was terrible. <laughs> I was just, I was trash, man, but I kept, I, I grew, I only made the basketball team because I was tall and I saw that it kept me out of trouble. So I was like, you know what, mate, I can, I can pursue this. So I'm, I'm, um, I'm gonna keep doing it. It's fun, right? Thinking about right, about maybe having dealing with that adversity as when, when you were younger, uh, but finding that passion that really uh, keep that keeps you uh, well, maybe away from that and, and and doing something you really like to do. Um, so going into maybe high school and college, which what you you said you only made it because you you only playing because you were tall, but obviously you eventually ended up getting good. Um, what did that look like for you in, in making a decision to to leave home and go to college and then everything else that uh, followed down the line? Um, I I just wanted to set the tone as the oldest boy of the household. You know, even though we weren't always in the same home. Uh, my two older sisters, they eventually went off and got their own places, but I wanted to set the tone. I wanted to be the first to graduate high school. I wanted to be the first to go to college. I wanted to be the first to graduate from college. And, um, you know, I definitely set the tone, I feel, to do that. And till this day, I am not satisfied. Uh, I still got a couple more goals in mind that I would like to accomplish. Yeah. And that, that's just always been my mindset to be the first to set the example for my, for, for my siblings that are underneath me uh, age wise. That's awesome. I'm thinking about how you're, you're, you're doing that and, and you're still doing that. You still have goals that we're going to talk about right later on as to how you can further that, right? You're not done yet, not even close. Uh, but thinking right then, um, going into your professional career, were you, were you, did you always think that you have an eye to like the, the media side of things, the acting side of things, doing stunts, or was that something that maybe came along later? Um, it, was, it, was, it was always basketball. Uh, well, it was like half and half. Basketball, like I said, it kept me out of trouble. But the love that I missed that I wasn't getting at home, it came from school. So I was able to make my friends laugh and just make other people feel good because in my in my head my mindset was you know even though I didn't know some of the people that I would say hi to I still would say hi to them because you never know what's going on in their head what's going on in their household and I didn't want them to feel like me empty and uh so I would just say hi man and, and make them laugh and when I saw how good I was at doing that I was like okay I can make I can definitely make this a career and making people laugh and, and smile and making their day better so that's when I was like okay well I think I'm gonna become a, a theater major. I love that, right? Seeing how you could use your the passion of basketball, but that's right, the vehicle to what you feel as you really love doing is making people laugh and, and doing all that stuff, right? And pursuing that acting career. So maybe what was the first step? I noticed you've done it. You've been in a couple of huge movies. Obviously, we'll talk about Space Jam later on. I'll be the first ones. Like, what, what was it like maybe for you getting your foot in the door into that acting speed, into the acting field? Honestly, it was, it was just a blessing. Just kind of, it found me. 
it found me um because i would play overseas you know i played in spain turkey bosnia italy japan lebanon thailand a little bit of mexico and every time i would finish the season and come home in the summer i would get a commercial without even searching for it i'd get an email saying hey are you available or somebody that i knew that did commercials hey they're looking for a basketball player can you come down and i would just go and do the commercial man so it, it, it found me and that's how I got on my foot in the door because I was building relationships and you know I just we always just stuck around we would contact one another on yo did you hear this oh no when is it okay it's gonna be this day go here at this location and um you know I still talk to a bunch of those guys and some of those guys you know got got their foot in the door way before I did uh, doing uh there's a buddy of mine uh Chetty he is he was just in a new Doom movie and he kind of just he just took off you know, and he's, he's still kind hearted, man. And he still keeps in contact with us, but like, yeah, man, that's, that's pretty much how I got my foot in the door. I just stuck with it. I knew it was something I wanted to do. You know, that's my absolute happy place uh, being on set and learning um, from, you know, the directors, the producers, the assistant directors, uh, people that are doing the stage, making the stages, lighting, the, the sound, the, the, the boom guy, which is the sound guy, and just learning from them and, and picking up everything that they do. So, so it's, that's so cool. And think about how you're maybe trying to touch your hand in every, in every aspect of the film industry, right? Not just maybe sticking to stunts, but you also want to just learn about everything else because who knows like what, where that passion might take you. Uh, but thinking maybe focusing on the, on the stunt stuff, I'm curious, maybe like, was that something where like, what was the training going like into that? Were, were, was, it was like, lifting a big part of that was, 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 was keeping your body right a huge part of that. Was it something that just maybe was hand in hand with, with the basketball you were already playing? Like, or, or were you, was there a whole separate thing uh, when it comes to being a stuntman? Oh, it's definitely the, the same, the same process, man. You got to, you got to work at it in order to be, to become better. And um, that's just, that's just what I did. I'm constantly working with other stunt men, stunt coordinators, uh, stunt women, you know, in that world, we call them stunt performers because we don't want to be biased to the ladies. Yeah, man, no, it's just hard work. They want you to know just about everything to, and to perfect it as much as you can, whether it's martial arts, whether it's flips, gymnastics. You know, I saw another thing on there, skateboarding, which I'm able to do at my height. Just a ton of things, skydiving classes, stunt driving. Like there's so many that you have to learn and you just, you know, if you can perfect them all, man, then boom, you're, you're, you're in, you're in as long as, you know, your, your heart's in it. And, you know, cause that's, that's, that's the second part of it. You're not, when you go into these auditions, you're not just performing for the, the Mr. The Mr. Williams or, you know, whatever it is, you're performing for the people that he's worked with and had around him and on his staff. Because if you go in there and, you know, you see a guy doing, uh, you know, you're doing wire work, he's talking, trying to talk to you uh, on how and what you need to do and just kind of prepping you before you go in there when you have no experience. And you're just like, oh man, I got this, da, 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 da. you know, sure. Okay. He's going to, he's going to, he's going to be like, all right. But at the end of the day, he's, he's going to go report because, you know, Mr. Williams is going to be like, you know, and I'm just saying that as an example for a name, he's, he's going to be like, well, how was, how was Zach? How did he, how did he do? It? You know, do you like him? No, he came in, he had an attitude. Energy was just terrible. And then he's just going to be like, okay, that's all I need to know. And you won't get hired again, man. So a big part of that is character. So it's not just learn. You can learn everything and have no character and you won't get a job. But if you got character and people will like you, you can go very far with that. And anyone listening to this show, right, just sees your character right away. Right? And you mentioned, you touched on a little bit earlier, but they might not know just from looking at you on Zoom is that you're 6'9", right? And, and you mentioned, right, at your right. height, doing things like skateboarding and stuff, right? But you're, you're, you're learning those skills and doing them. Obviously, not everyone in Hollywood is is 6'9", uh, in terms of, like, mo most actors. But there are the right. roles, like like being LeBron, like, like like LeBron James, and those are those actors that are that. And, and that's your specialty, right, going in and, and doing roles like that. Um, How did that maybe uh, work out early on, maybe with the roles like and stuff like that, uh, before doing Space Jam, where you, 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 you may, you're maybe... Uh, fitting those roles perfectly um, at your size and, and doing a really good job at them. Okay. Yesterday, um, just, you know, it just, it just came about, you know, yeah, honestly, it was just a blessing because I was like right after Space Jam and um, I got, I got the call, man, and they were looking for a bunch of us, you know, just people that were athletic that, you know, kind of knew how to take direction, but was still on the youth side and uh, just, you know, just were just good energy. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much how I got yesterday. And there, and a lot of us that was on Space Jam actually went to, got the opportunity to go and, and do the water balloon scene on yesterday. So it was, it was pretty fun, man. It was insane.
and touches on the whole thing you mentioned earlier about that network, right? And because you're so charismatic in one role, they see that and, and like you and, and your other uh, stunt performers, uh, your, your teammates, they're like, okay, wait, these guys work well together. There's there's, this, there's that chemistry. Let's let's keep that let's keep that momentum going. Um, so that now transitioning over to, to Space Jam, I mean, how did that role all, all come about? Because obviously that right, it's just something that's been maybe uh, hyped up or talked about in the basketball world for years now, and it finally took shape this year. Uh, what, what did that all look like? Man, it was it was a blessing to be honest. You know, I've worked with LeBron for about seven or eight years now doing his stand-in work for Nike. Yeah, man. And it just, I fit the, I fit what they were looking for. They, they knew I did a good job in the past for all his other commercials and man, they got the call and wanted to see how I would do. And man, I, I ended up booking the gig. Oh, that, that's fun. And then thinking about that role specifically, right? I mean, especially with something like, like Space Jam where it's Looney Tunes based, things get really, really wacky, really, really fast and all the time, right? Things are all, all like Looney, as they would say, right? It's just all so crazy. I mean, well, how different was that for maybe your other roles where you're, you're asked to do stunts that aren't really physically possible in, in, in the normal world? It's, it's just, it was just crazy and very, it was, and also very, very professional. Like I compare that, that set to almost every set that I go to, but no, man, I just, you know, for me, I'm down to do just about anything if given the opportunity because it's what I love to do and it's always something that I had in my head that I wanted to do. So to be able to do to do stunts and be a part of LeBron's legacy and help his legacy grow and become even greater was just a huge blessing. And um, I'm just, you know, I'm hoping that he keeps me, you know, in his circle is for whatever he has going on for me to, to just continue the legacy with him and, and allow me to do my work, man, and, and just be become even better and perfect it in any way I can. Oh, that, that's perfect, right? And thinking about just how uh, continuing that legacy and doing, I mean, that's good. And you're right, this was maybe they called a new legacy, but right, still keeping uh, the same one going. And you mentioned how you did work with, with LeBron in the past. I'm curious, maybe what that, for those last eight, nine years, maybe what that, all that stuff looked like. That sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, honestly, man, it was just, it was just really like just stand-in work, stand-in work, you know, where they pretty much size the camera to, to his build and his height and where they needed to be before he comes in and uh, does his thing. But um, yeah, that's, that's how I started, man. And I got the call and this was my first big movie, you know, and to be able to say my first movie was Space Jam 2 and see my name in the credits at the very top is, it's insane, man. I, I cried because it wasn't, it wasn't like, I, I didn't expect to do it because originally I was supposed to do Giannis's, Giannis was supposed to be a part of it and he ended up backing out. And so I was, I was a little bummed about that, but I ended up getting a call, man. They wanted me to, to see, they wanted to see if I can do LeBron's uh, stunt double, man. And I went in there and I, and I killed it. Giannis is maybe the only other player by being up on my wall, me being Greek that I would, I would have loved to see you do that role too. But obviously right, me and LeBron is pretty cool too. You can't really go along oh, with the two of them. Yeah. The audition for that was insane. I mean, I, I put it all out there, man. I even, in my hair, I had my hair, I was growing it out for like, yeah, I think it was like five years at the time. And, um, you know, when he backed out, I was, you know, I was like, ah, you know, but, you know, he got other things that he wants to do and he doesn't necessarily want to be, you know, a part of the Hollywood scene uh, movie wise. But I thought he should have, I thought he should have at least did Space Jam, but, you know, because Space Jam is just one of those iconic uh, movies, you know, Michael Jordan did it and now you got LeBron, which will go down in history forever so I thought that would have been dope for him to do but you know everybody has their own things and niche that they want to do but um yeah and then I got the call and they had me come in and and do stunts for LeBron and I had to cut my hair and it, it was it was worth it I would have been a fool not to cut my hair for Space Jam so and I'm glad I did I made that decision I mean it was an easy decision for me because I never I always liked Space Jam the first Space Jam Michael Jordan and to be called to come do Space Jam 2 was just like, are you serious? I thought I was being pranked. That's, that's so funny. I mean, what, what, wait, so what was that? How did that call? You just got the call one day, picked it up, and we're like, okay, I'm doing space. Yeah, uh, yeah. I just got the call. Like, hey, are you? Uh, how are you? How are you with wire work? Are you afraid of heights? I'm like, no, you know, I'm I'm not afraid of heights. Well, okay, well, we're gonna give you an opportunity, see what you can do, and then they gave me my call time, man, and I and I met, and the rest is history. Right. And like, exactly. It is, it is history and something that's going to go down forever uh, for, for years down the line being, you know, one of the most famous basketball movies that's going to be played for, right, for, for a long time. But you mentioned, like, cutting your hair and all these things you've had to do to get ready for roles and, and, this, and like with wire work and the stuff that that takes. I mean, everyone maybe knows about some of the, those uh, jaw defying dunks you had to do for Space Jam, too. But I mean, even including those, what's been the craziest stunt you've ever had to do or the craziest preparation you've had to do for a stunt? The crazy preparation I had to do for the stunt, I'd have to say jump through the window. Jumping through the window is insane because you have to prep for that. And there's a certain way to jump through a window. So obviously you don't get hurt. So 
learning the process of that, I didn't even know it was it was more to it other than your angles. It was like you had to jump like this, or your arm has to go a certain way to kind of just, and you still got to brace your fall. You still got to know where you're landing on the mat. And uh, yeah, man, so learning how to do that, and I'm still learning. I'm, a, I'm definitely a, um, a student of the art. So, you know, I, I love doing whatever it takes, well, learning the process of, of stunts and, and just uh, learning to become better. Definitely. I mean, the one, the one video maybe from all that that's maybe gone viral is a video of everyone thinks it's LeBron. I thought it was LeBron when I first saw it, right? Obviously, then, then knowing I get to talk to you, I'm like, wait, maybe that wasn't LeBron. I looked a little closer. I still can't really tell. I don't, other... I don't know. You don't it know? LeBron. You... It was LeBron, man. It was Le... We'll go, we'll go was... with that. It was LeBron uh, in the it was LeBron. Got everywhere. Sports Center, Bleach Report, wherever it was, uh, that yeah. same video. So, so thinking about right, right, clips like that going viral, and and right, I mean, what's been what's the, what's the last week like been for you now? The you know the, the filming might have ended a few months ago, but now seeing it finally take shape and, and be put out to the public, what's this last week been like for you? Oh man, the last week has just been you know just just crazy. I'm ready to get back into it. I got um, we're working on something in the works right now that I can't say. I almost just told you, but no, it's just it's just you know it's like any other day. You know, you get right back to it. You finish one you know, one movie or one commercial and, you know, now it's, it's on, it's on to the next one. And you don't usually see it until it comes out um, because they're prepping it, adding audio and whatever else they need to do to it to make, you know, the, the movie just amazing. And so you really don't really know until it comes out and you're like, oh, oh, I forgot I did that. You know, and it's just, it, and that's, that's like the best part for me. It's like the element of surprise because you, you'll do so much. And then you'll go to the next one and just the next one right after another. And then all of a sudden, you go, oh, the commercial, the trailer comes out for it. You're just like, I did do that one, you know? So it's like, this, that is just amazing. So that's, I mean, for me, it's just, you know, on to the next one, but you know, it's just, you get to enjoy your work when you see it, when everything is set, set and done. Definitely, I can imagine it's an incredible feeling and you're going to be experiencing that a lot more over the coming months, years, whatever it is, because I'm enjoying, I can't wait to see it on the big screen. You have a lot of cool projects coming up that, right, maybe we'll have to do a part two to talk about those things. But Zach, honestly, <laughs> this was awesome talking to you, right, seeing you on the big screen and then now right, talking to you here. It's been a lot of fun. So thank you so much for coming on the show and I can't wait thank to uh, you. talk again soon. Likewise, man. I appreciate you, John. Thanks for listening to Gen Z Hoops. Make sure to follow, like, and subscribe on Instagram, LinkedIn, and all major social media platforms at Gen Z Hoops. You can tune in and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and every other podcast platform on the planet. Get ready for the next episode.